Hello Paddlers! Happy Thursday! This is Kristen Thomas and this is SupConnect Live. Thank you SupConnect for allowing me to do these interviews every Thursday. Always fun, have such a great time, um, wonderful people out there in the paddling world and today we're going to Canada. We're going to be talking with Tomas, Thomas, Tommy. He's going to tell me what he prefers because I'm not sure. Boudet. Um, such a great story, an amazing family history with paddling and lifelong paddling for him and a super active member of the stand-up paddle community. Originally from Budapest, Hungary, um, but has lived in Canada most of his life. He moved here when he was a child actually because of paddling as he's going to tell us about. Just a couple quick reminders that we do have a Facebook group. That's where we follow up so that you can find these great people we're talking to. Um, share pictures there, videos, um, announcements. We've had people who've written, you know, books or are coming out with videos or something. So that's, that's the place. It's hashtag subconnect live and hashtag KT outside discussions. And then also, um, if somebody, you know, missed this, please direct them to either IGTV on subconnects channel where we are now, where it is available immediately afterwards, or it will end up on two YouTube channels both subconnects and mine, KT Outside. So um, let's see if we can uh, find Tomas. There he is, right there. Oh, unable to join. Not sure why it says that. Uh-oh, Tomas, do you ha are you blocked or something? <clears throat> I see you there, T. Boudet Jr. Um, there is an option for you to ask to go live with me. Maybe you can find that. I'm trying to send you an invite. Hi, Alex, Jason, who else we got here? Jane, Dan, Taylor, who, remind me, Taylor, you have a question that I have written down for Tomas. Huh, I'm not sure why it says he is unable to join. Does anybody know? Anybody there with a, who's super techie? <laughs> um, I don't think it'd be a North American thing, although, boy, coming up with different things lately, aren't they? Um, to be more cautious and safe, I know, but sometimes they are hurdles to doing things like this. Um, ooh, there he is. Wonderful. Well, anything? Tomas, you solved it. And um, he should be jumping on live right now. Maybe with kids in his lap. <laughs> hey guys! Hey, there you are. No, no, I was trying to go off my laptop, and for ah. some reason, that's not working. So, Instagram, like, Instagram has to be on the phone, or I think an iPad. Um, yeah, isn't that weird? You can look at some things on Instagram, but it's very limited what you can do on. But now you know. <laughs> now I know. I'm yeah. sorry. No, that's okay. It was only Hello. a few seconds. Hey. You've got a bunch of fans here. Taylor's waving at you and Shaka. Yes. Oh, I love these guys. These guys are all the way from Vermont. Oh, that's awesome. Taylor's Wonderful. Spencer yeah. just signed on. What's up, boys? And thanks yeah. for everybody joining us. And again, Kristen, thank you for having me. Thank you, uh, SubConnect, for having a Canadian on board. <laughs> we love it. Uh, so many great Canadians. I want to call you the Canadian, but I do think of you as um, definitely someone who's corralling the wonderful energy of Canada and the stand-up paddlers. And um, you're definitely a go-to guy. But we got to back up because your whole life is a paddling story. And yeah. you have an amazing family history. I mentioned already at the beginning, if you didn't hear, that you were born in Budapest, Hungary, which we will come back to later because there's something exciting wow. happening in your, your hometown or right nearby later this year. Um, but start by just telling us a little bit about your, um, your father and that's that's where paddling got started right before you were born exactly so my whole family is is very european strictly uh, directly straight out of uh, hungary um my father thomas senior so i'm i always go by tommy or thomas but tommy jr as most people know me tj uh because my dad was a national team uh canoe athlete sprint canoe athlete for hungary uh, and in 1976, here in Montreal, where I ended up living, uh, he won two bronze medals at the Olympic Games with his partner. Wonderful. And when he retired, uh, around 1986 was his last year as the senior team manager. 
uh, the World Championships were in Montreal again, and he got invited by the Canadians to uh, coach the national team. And at that point, we know very famous, also Canadian sub athlete and Olympic gold medalist Larry Kane uh, became my dad's athlete. And yeah. so his contract was till, this was in 1986, I believe, till like 88 Olympics. Well, he ended up coaching for the next 25 years, the Canadian national team. And uh, uh, he's, his only request was to be able to bring his family from Hungary to Canada for those two years. Um, and we've been here ever since. So <laughs> it, it, it turned out quite well for us. Um, and so I have two brothers, an older brother, Attila, my younger brother, Peter, and, and of course, my mom, Olga, who the five of us moved from Hungary, left a huge Hungarian family behind on my dad's side, on the Budai side, and I'll, of course, my mom's side as well. Um, and as we got older and we got more and more involved with paddling, uh, we got to travel to all around Europe, all around the world, and we're lucky enough to usually stop by and visit Hungary and visit our cousins. So, so we weren't that much divided but even though it was a big ocean between us that so we were able to see us see each other uh quite often oh that's wonderful and stay in touch well what what a legacy and how wonderful that you stuck with it and i didn't realize your dad was larry kane's coach that's really fun that's new yeah. information very cool and uh amazing how things do connect in that way um, another little tidbit too uh mm -hmm. at the end of uh close to i think it was for 96 to 2000 or even before 96, Jimmy Terrell, actually, founder of Quick Blade Paddles uh, from Team USA, who's always a very good friend of Larry Kane and, and big rivals, uh, ended up training with the Canadian team, Joe Harper, many other American guys. Uh, so Team Canada and Team US were always tight. So my dad, as well as my uncle, before my dad coached Jimmy Terrell and the, and the US team. So, so the Blue Dice have kind of migrated overseas and, and, and coached many great athletes uh, in the sport of canoe kayak. Oh, that's wonderful. And if, if people don't know the history, um, Eastern Europe, it's huge. Um, you know, talking to Kritza Zur here um, about, I mean, she's a rock star back there. I mean, oh, yeah. Hungary, it is, it's one of their top sports, right? And it's definitely your thought of and known much better than you are perhaps in North America when you're in that sport. Well, absolutely. I mean, Hungary, is a, it's, it's a really, really small country to begin with compared to U.S. and, and, and Canada. And, but the sport is well recognized. I mm -hmm. would say it is the top sport in, in, in that country, uh, you know, besides swimming and maybe fencing. And there's also, uh, you know, water polo is a huge sport in, in Hungary. But canoe kayak, it is like Christina Zur. She's, you know, double Olympic gold medalist. And she is a rock star, and and all the besides all the other athletes, and 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 it's really nice to see that a country, uh, a small country like Hungary, but we're talking about most of the European countries too. They really support their athletes, um, and 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 you know, uh, they're that's that's their full time job, and and that's how they're getting paid, or even even better when when you start getting results uh, with sponsorship. So so it's it's. You, you know that sport is 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 huge, and you know we we are going to talk about Balaton and 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 this summer coming up, but uh, uh, it's very exciting. It is all very exciting, and so um, you were kayak or canoe? Did you have a specialty? Um... I was canoe. I was yeah. canoe, uh, just like my father. So in spring canoe, you know, we're, we we paddle on one side and <laughs> we always stay on that side so we don't switch back and forth. Yes. I was lucky enough that my brother paddled the opposite side of my of me. So we actually became a team. So that's how we competed at doing our world championships and three oh. Olympic games. And my younger brother, Peter, he was a kayak athlete. So when you compare a uh, canoe and kayak, kayak is faster because it's double bladed, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, he was sitting in his spring kayak and my brother and myself in our double, we were about the same speed. So that's how we did most of our trainings uh, as we grew up. And, and of course, my dad being our coach. So oh. it was really a, a family thing. 
And that's so interesting. I'd never thought about the double. I knew that you only, the, the high nail canoe is just crazy how <laughs> narrow those things are. I actually, oh, yeah. we, we just did a virtual Hano Hano. We did a race in San Diego and Kitsy, who's a young lady who's yeah. um, doing kayak yeah, and course. canoe for the yeah. U.S. You know her? Yeah. yeah. So um, she was, she was next to, to me and oh my gosh, just any wake, how that affects you and how it's only one-sided, but I'd never thought that the double, that makes sense that yeah. you need one of you to be, does it tend to be the right-handed person paddles on the right and the left-handed or not necessarily? Not necessarily. It's, it's what you're comfortable with, kind of like how you surf. Uh, yeah. Your, your regular, 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 goofy. How yeah. you snowboard. Like, I'm mm -hmm. right-handed, but I paddled all my life on the left side. Oh, um, interesting. And, and my dad's, uh, well, actually, he's left-handed and he's a lefty. But, it, it you know, my brother ended up to be a right uh, righty. So, it, it really is how maybe uh, when you first start, what the canoe club or what the group needs if we need more athletes on the left or on the right and the kind of coach is kind of interesting that way yeah but it's really it's your comfort and what 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 you like uh sometimes the coaches say no you're we need right so you're right or we need left so you're left but yeah usually it's yeah it's interesting i've seen a little bit of that in stand-up when a stand-up paddle surfer joins our training group and has always just been a surfer, well, then they definitely have a dominant side and they don't want to paddle on both sides. They oh, really yeah. want to be one-sided. Um, but oh. I think actually Larry Kane has done some webinars about why it's important. It is important to be able to paddle on both sides. And to Absolutely. <laughs> like us print canoe guys that come from paddling on one side all of our lives, uh, when we, and we all went through this, when we joined up even in, in, in uh, OC1s or hopped on our subboards, uh, we have a dominant side, and, and most people will have, as you mentioned, dominant side. Um, but uh, but I actually ended up calling Larry and Jimmy after about two months of paddling, saying, guys, what am I doing wrong? My opposite side, I feel like I broke a rib. Because all those muscles that I never really used, all of a sudden they're being used because I'm switching sides. And it was very painful. But uh -huh. until you got used to it, um, mm -hmm. it, it, it hurt. And, and there's that moment where it's like, oh, man, what's going on here? I'm not doing something right. But it, it's just getting used to it and, and you know, equalizing the body. And uh, Larry always talks about it. Jimmy talks about it. Even Danny Ching says you need to switch sides to, to give your, your, your side a break. And, and yeah. that way you, you'll be more efficient. Well, super interesting information. And you guys were breaking ground because stand up paddling, at least as a, you know, racing sport is not very old. You, you know, can discuss origins, but we don't. Yeah. Um, but, but what you have and the knowledge you have is so useful, but it had to be adapted. And I'm sure it took you guys some time and discussions about how to make it work and how to make it work best. Oh, constantly. And, and, and we still have conversations. And, and as I go further into the sport, um, every day I realize that that paddling a subboard is nothing like paddling a sprint canoe. I mean, yes, it's very similar. The strokes and the basics are there, but the technique and as, as the boards are getting skinnier, the blades are getting shorter and, and mm -hmm. smaller, you realize that you have to do major adaptation, not only switching back and forth, but, but on technique. And, and, you know, the board runs a lot different than those skinny, skinny bo boats that you talked about. Um, so, so there's a lot of change in, but it's all exciting because we're all learning it at the same time. Yeah. Sure. We know how to connect with the water, but you still need to connect with the board and the water and the technique. So there's a lot of stuff to it. Yeah. Well, I want to come back to that when we maybe yeah. talk about racing again, but I want to get back to you because you had your Olympic career in one sport, uh, kind of got into the coaching, right? Yeah. Where, yeah, talk a little bit about that. And then where was the stand-up paddling? Where did you first see it? How did that come about? Sure. So, yeah. So I was actually still training. My brother and myself, we finished the, the 2004 Olympics, which was in Athens. And we missed a Olympic medal by, ooh, I don't even know how. The best way to describe it is we have nine athletes or nine countries in the final. We ended up eight, but the top eight came within one second. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so, so literally, the Chinese crew that was beside us beat us by about maybe half a meter, not even Ugh. a meter. And between them and us, there were seven other crews or six other crews. And we were the seventh because they were. Oh, wow. So it was very tight. Yeah. So after that, we decided like, OK, you know what? Four more years. I think we could do it. 
Um, so we ended up winning a silver medal in 2006 at the World Championship, so two years later, which was okay. fantastic. It ended up in Hungary in front of our family and the Hungarian crowd. So it was one of those, like, finally we're on the podium. And uh, uh, so it was, it was memorable for sure. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, as time goes by, younger, stronger athletes come along. And by 2008, which was our, our goal uh, in Beijing, a uh, younger Canadian crew who are, were our, our teammates, uh, Andrew Russell and Gabriel Boucher, a good friend of ours, uh, they were just stronger and they were faster. There's no excuses. They, they beat us. So they got to go to the Olympics and actually did quite well. I think they got two fifth places, which is very, very respectful and very great. Um, but at that time, I think we decided, my brother just had his firstborn baby, and we just kind of said, you know what, that was a pretty good run. We would have kept going. There were other things that was happening, but, but you know, we, we ended up retiring, and I ended up moving because we were no longer paddling, so we didn't need to be together, my brother and myself. So we all grew, we, we grew up in Mississauga, Ontario, just outside of Toronto. And I moved to Montreal, actually further Montreal, to Trois-Rivières, where my girlfriend at the time lived. And then I ended up marrying her two years later, uh, or three years later. Um, so, so we separated at that point. And at that point, I actually ended up uh, coaching. And, uh, you know, I ended up coaching a bunch of different canoe clubs, because uh, then from where she was originally from, we moved back to Montreal. And I got a, a, a full-time coaching position there for the next 10 years. So I kind of fell into the same footsteps as my dad. As when I mm -hmm. retired, and I ended up coaching Spring Canoe Kayak. And I loved every minute of it. It was fantastic, you know, giving back to the kids, watching the kids grow up and develop and go into national, international competition. It was fantastic. Um, but I started having or my wife and I, we started having kids too. And with our own kids, coaching became kind of a struggle because I was spending more time with other kids than my own kids. So mm -hmm. I kind of stepped back a few years ago where I just only coached part-time. So I get to spend a lot more time yes. at home helping my wife and, and obviously being with my kids. And, and it hasn't, it, it, you know, I never regretted that move. I love every minute with my kids and watching them grow now too. And so, so that's where we're at right now. Fantastic. So stand up paddle boarding. We love all paddling, of course, but that, that's the major theme here. So did you um, hear about it from Larry and Jimmy, your longtime friends, or did you see it somewhere? Were you watching videos and thinking, I got to try that? Well, you know what? At that point, we didn't even see a lot of videos. Um, even even in those first couple of years where Carolina Cup was kind of big with Jamie Mitchell and, and Jimmy and, and Larry and uh, Rami Zur and all these athletes, you know, that were, uh, I think, you know, like a lot of those top name athletes were, were still young, like Casper and actually Casper is a lot younger than me. But, <laughs> but so there were not a lot of videos. So the way we got into it was, of course, uh, you know, Jimmy Terrell's, uh, you know, uh, uh, talking to Larry all the time. And we also got into a lot of outrigger paddling. So we did the Molokai hole twice, uh, ah. myself and my younger mm -hmm. brother, Peter, because he became actually a big outrigger paddler here in, 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 in Canada. And he still owns his own outrigger company. So these guys all started the uh, outrigger paddling. And ah. then Larry at one point went to California, visited Jimmy, and then he ended up with, with a, a, a paddle board and they started going up and down the river. And I think at this point, I was still, we were still training out for the Olympics and Larry and, and other guys were always saying like, Tommy, you got to try this. You got to try this. You love surfing. You did all your surfing down in Florida while we we're training camp. Uh, you would love this. But I was like, guys, this board is big. It's fat. It's slow. <laughs> I don't. It's supposed to be in the ocean. We got no waves here. It's like, no, no, no. You got to take it out of Lake Ontario. And I was like, I don't know. I, if I'll do anything, I'll do OC1 and, and Albrecht because we've been doing mm -hmm. that. It was super fun. And I remember one September uh, uh, fall, 
uh, I went from Montreal with my, with my wife, and I think we probably had a firstborn child, Tristan, by then. And my brothers, we just said, let's go paddle boarding. Sure, let's go paddle boarding. So we went on Lake Ontario. And Lake Ontario is quite big, but it's a lake. It's not an ocean, but it's, it's a beautiful lake. And you can have all kinds of uh, water conditions. conditions. Mm -hmm. and, and it was one of those magical, sunny, warm fall days. The water was still not very cold, but like beautiful, big rollers. So we paddled into them and turned around and actually started down winding or down surfing. And, and I fell in love with it. I was like, oh, my God, this is amazing. This is so much fun. Right there and then, I brought my first board from uh, Derek Schroeder, who's a local. He owns a local shop in, in, in Oakville right now. And mm -hmm. he set me up with my first quick bit paddle, the first bark board. And from then on, I yeah. just started paddling and training. And, and I just never looked back. That's awesome. I didn't yeah. know that about you. So, yeah. We, we, many of us have those getting hooked moments. So it's interesting to hear what yours was. And about what year was that? Do you remember? About I'm going to say that must have been around 2003 because Tristan was born 2000. No, sorry, not 2003, 2013. Okay. 2013. I was going to say that you were really, really early. No, no, no. Yeah. yeah. 2013. <laughs> I'm bad with years. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's 2013, quite all right. 2000. Yeah. 2013 is, is uh, where where I really, really got hooked, fell in yeah. love with it, started paddling. Because at that point, yes, I was retired, but I would all, and, and I was coaching spring canoe, but I would do most of my, uh, my coaching out of my spring canoe with my athletes. When we mm -hmm. go to training camps, I would still paddle and try to stay, stay somewhat in shape. But once I got on the support, uh, my canoe almost got, almost retired and like for good. And, <laughs> uh, and it just, it just, yeah went forward from then on. Yeah. Well, I know the last five years, I mean, again, always an athlete and a coach, but stand up paddling has really dominated the, on both of the fronts. And you said you've really grown a, a quite a paddling business now. So coaching, but introducing kids, which you have this great history of, and I think we still need to kind of organize our youth focus yeah. in stand up paddling so that we continue to, to feed them and grow them. Um, I mean, so good for so many reasons. So tell us about your business and, you know, how you dove into that. So, so exactly. So when I, when I you know, step back and spend more time at home with my kids, uh, I wasn't really, you know, kind of locked down to a group that I would train with all the time at, at, at our local canoe club where I was connected to. Um, so I had my weekends, I had weekdays where, where I can, you know, pick days where I, I would go train by myself and around Montreal, Montreal is an island. So we have beautiful waterways and I just couldn't believe that nobody else is paddling with me. And I know there's a few people here and there, you know, but I wanted to get a group together and it started very slowly where, uh, and of course, somehow, you know, like I was able to attract more women than, than men on boards and mm -hmm. we grew and each year, we, we got back on the water because, you know, we have winters here and we can't paddle like we're frozen. We're not like Larry and Derek and these guys where they paddle all year long. We, <laughs> we actually freeze. And, and, and I, I like to take some time away from the off the water. But but every time we got back on the water, I had more and more people being interested. People are talking, you know, we're posting pictures. And so my group became the Lake Sup Gliders. And it was mainly for adults, just to teach them proper technique, proper use of equipment, uh, what to look for, help people, you know, purchase boards or paddles, what to, what to, what kind of questions you really want to ask, where can we get race boards or inflatables, and and that grew into like an, a, a a legit summer program where we have training camps now. Last year we were down in Florida because we we're allowed to go. We were down in Florida early February for a week. Mm -hmm. um, in the fall, we had a training camp up here in Canada, which was beautiful. And, and, you know, I have over, you know, some days we have over 20, 25 people on the water. Maybe not all at the same time. As even last summer, we had to break it up because of COVID restrictions and social distancing, plus of coaching capabilities too. I don't want to have too many people on, on, on the water. But, uh, but it's really growing. And, 
and with a fellow Olympian, Emily, and you know her quite well, uh, Emily, uh, uh, for now, we are going to do a kids program and starting right. this summer, um, and it's going to be called Mini Lake Sub Gliders, Mini Gliders, because it was kind of idea, I would like M to coach it full time, and mm -hmm. M's a little mini go-getter, and she's <laughs> amazing, so we uh -huh. just nicknamed it Mini Gliders. So we like to get that program started this this year, ah, and and like great. you said, you know what better way to grow is to to be able to give this this availability or boards and equipment to kids and get them hooked onto this sport and and hopefully, you know we we could develop, uh, you know more clubs around Canada as well, um, more racing. We need a lot more races to do. Mm -hmm. Obviously, with with COVID right now, it's very hard and everything came to a a stand but but there are a lot of willing people that want to join that want to help volunteer do do whatever and if if you know if m and i could start a real legit good program for the girl or the for the kids we already have an amazing adult program that's gonna hopefully keep growing um it's fantastic, Tommy. I have to say, people, yeah. as Kirsty is saying, you can feel your love through this. I mean, you really have such <laughs> great energy. Thank you. <laughs> and um, so there's actually a, a great couple. I think it's Ozzy who's on right now. They're from Sayulita, where they have a kids program. And he's saying, yes, more kids program. And yes. let's see, Fab Dawes. I don't know who that is. Yeah, yeah more racing. So I think... Um, Community always comes up. I mean, there's just such a, uh, as much as it's this individual sport and many people love it for things that are very much about, you know, their connection to the water or nature or the exercise. And you said you trained on your own, but we also love the people in this community. And um, I always ask the question are, is it great people who paddleboard or does paddleboard turn you into a great person? <laughs> you know, it just seems like water people just have, and I mean, you're a, fantastic example of great energy and um you know wanting to to be together and to you know whether it's in training groups in summer camps in races that's why i encourage people who say i don't know if i want to race i'm like well you don't have to really be about the race you know yeah. anybody's in it but come for the community come to to hang out with other stand-up paddleboarders absolutely and i would agree with you and i would say it's a little bit of both i think paddling makes you better and 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 you know uh uh, meeting people and that's exactly it and 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 I heard a lot of people say that that due to COVID a lot of positive things have happened uh, mm -hmm. I know uh, you know because we're individual and you were only allowed to do individual sports a lot of people dove into paddle boarding a lot of sports got shut down like dragon boarding that's very popular here for us um, mm -hmm. you weren't allowed to go in your team so he, and a lot of people didn't want to stop training, so they ended up getting either outriggers, but they're kind of expensive, or you buy a nice board, and you can do it anywhere, and it's very easy. And that made the community grow. But like you said, it's, yes, top athletes and racers, and I love racing and competing and going out there, yes. even as an old guy, try to compete against the top <laughs> guys, like, you know, Boothy and these guys. It's super fun. I might never be on top, but just that whole community and, and the – the excitement before, after, during. Uh, mm. I mean, my favorite moments, and I think we can all agree to it, is our favorite moments is after races, when you're sitting down and enjoying a, a cold one and some food, and you're talking about the race, talking mm -hmm. to your friends. How did it go for you? How did it go? You know, my favorite person on the water is Jeremy Bain. That guy, <laughs> I've never seen him upset in my life, right? Like, <laughs> uh, and And... There's just so many great people that you and I could name in this mm -hmm. board that are just, you know, their energy and, and who doesn't want to be around that kind of environment? And, you yeah. know, like you, you brought up, you know, Sayulita, you know, the, the, the kids there, the program. Um, I was there in, I think it was 2015, the ISA Worlds. And, and when I saw Sayuri, it was beautiful. And then that community has grown so much, too. And it's so nice to see. I know in California, Mike has an amazing program for the girls. Yeah. I mean, amazing athletes yes. come yeah. from it. Yeah, the youth, like, you know, Shay Fowdy, you know, uh, uh, Jade. Jade. These, these guys are unbelievable. And that's what you need. And, and, and here in Canada, we're really established with our canoe kayak program. 
and mm -hmm. it'd be great to integrate stand up paddle boarding mm. one thing that I like to get into is really try to get the canoe clubs with paddle boarding because our spring canoes like we talked about before are so skinny and when it's wavy and rough up there a lot of the new beginner kids don't really like that where they they're always tipping and sinking but on a paddle board that's what you're looking for you're looking for waves you're looking for excitement so if we can integrate this kind of paddling and this kind of community with already our paddling community it could grow and it'd be so wonderful and yeah. imagine all the the races and all the more excitement that we can get out of it and and mm -hmm. uh, get the families involved uh, it would be just yeah I, I mean that's our dream right yeah have been talking to the american canoe association which is the, it is the u.s uh one part of it is is the competitive side and about how to do that and and again i just have to throw out there because i'm i have plenty of surf friends too and there's that interesting thing that this yeah. wonderful versatile watercraft that you said it's it's one of the least people you know can say it's a barrier to entry because yes it does cost some money but in the big picture of a sport it's an individual craft and a paddle and it's less expensive than most boats um, so it's a vessel that's really versatile that you can use in so many ways so I think it is one of the easiest it is for the first time there's as many if not more women um, doing a water sport which has never been true of any water sport before so it's really all encompassing and again it can be done by anyone in almost any place on any water so so many draws to this so it's very understandable that surfing and which validly has a link and canoe and kayak has a link i wish we could connect them a little bit more exactly. <laughs> but for now we're just uh i'm i think like you trying to be open open to all but um yeah, I think it's just fantastic. And I got to know you a bit last year in China. The International Canoe Federation has sponsored and is hopefully in June, if all goes well, and we continue, you know, getting through this pandemic. We're hoping yeah. to um, see each other on the name of the lake outside of Budapest. It's uh, Lake Balaton. Balaton, yes. Balaton. Yes. Yeah, Balaton, so, Fured, it's, it's, it's. Like I said, Hungary is, is small, but it's absolutely beautiful. And, and like any European country, the history behind it is, is fantastic. Um, I know you mentioned that y you guys are very interested in going, uh, even as a you know, race, vacation kind of. And I think that's really the destination for most people who let's going to travel overseas. Yeah. Take an extra week, please, just to visit <laughs> Hungary, Austria, Vienna, yeah. that's close by. Uh, Prague, uh, it's just wonderful. It's beautiful. Um, and you can, you know, squeeze all those races in because I think yeah. there's a race in Austria oh. the week before. Oh, really? Maybe yeah. a week or two weeks after the Euro Tour is Euro doing Tour. a race in Prague after Budapest, the Hungry and ICF yeah. World. So I, it's my dream to be able to go. Um, I'd love to go. I know the International Canoe Federation is, is, is moving ahead. And they've already, Hungary's committed 100%. Of course, everything depends on how things are with the pandemic. and the, Yeah, travel restrictions and everything. Travel I know restriction. We just sadly had a postponement of Carolina Cup. We, I think a lot yeah. of us were hoping that was going to be the first, but I'm sure they decided international people were not going to be able to, to get here in April. Yeah. So that's rescheduled for November. What is that, the third rescheduling? So it has yeah. to happen this time, but... Um, I think there's great, great possibility for June. So I'm super optimistic about that. Um, I think they did, you know, wasn't perfect, but did such a great job in China. I mean, it, we're still figuring out stand up paddling and we don't all still agree about some of, you know, I'm a bit involved on the rule side and everything. And, and uh, Emily, that's funny. Minnie, I love that that's going to be because that, that's her Instagram handle, I think. Yep. Minnie Fornell, because she's Petite and strong as hell. <laughs> strong and fast. <laughs> yes. Watch, watch for her racing stuff, too. Cause yeah. She would have been allowed to race there, the 200 meters. I think she could have surprised some people, but. Yeah. We'll I know, see. I know. We And I, she probably doesn't like me because I don't know if you remember because I borrowed your paddle. Yep. But you won a gold medal there. And your and, paddle from Quickblade won too because I borrowed it. <laughs> you won too, exactly. Because I snuck in and they had the, the two masters categories and I'm quite a bit older than you. I'm in the, the oldest one and I just, it was killing me as it was her, I'm sure, also. Yeah. 
we loved what we were doing. We were so happy to be there, but it was hard to be, you know, an official and a judge when you're a racer too. <laughs> I think I think ICF learned a lot, especially from from that World Championships. It was the very first time they ran it. Um, I think personally, most of the hiccups were not because I mean maybe you know it was very first, but I think there was a lot of language barrier problems. Like you, you know, even our translator. Yep has had a few hard times. I mean, we all stayed in a hotel and, you know, when we asked what time is the bus coming back, he said, yeah, lunch is at 12, you know, like, so <laughs> yes. there was a lot of stuff that was just a lot like, of stuff. When you yeah. Organize a huge event like that. I uh -huh. think, uh, you know, things are going to be, you know, but I, I look so forward to the world championships in Hungary, like yeah. you mentioned before, Hungary and their canoeing, and not only just their canoe kayak, but now their, their paddle boarding has become huge. Dragon boat, dra uh, paddle boarding, um, it's, it's really fast growing in Europe. I mean, we can talk to Andre Krator, who's a, an amazing sp sprint canoe slash yeah. rough athlete yeah. now, who, who's, who's pushing paddle boarding in Russia. And, yeah. and, and it's, it's massive. I mean, I think Russia has the world record for the most amount of people showing up to one race. There's like, over, I don't know, five, six, seven thousand people. Like, it's crazy. Crazy, um, yeah. So, but amazing and so exciting. But we need yes. to harness this energy. I just really feel like we're still disorganized. We still have multiple world championships. It's okay. Embrace yeah. it for now. At some point, we will all, yeah, the language barrier and just the fact, again, that it's not set in stone how stand up paddling works. It's exactly. so interesting to me, not coming from canoe and kayak, to see that 200 meter. I, in 2010, I got to be in the Silver Blade Regatta. I had just started stand-up paddleboarding. It was 200 meters. It was electronically timed. It was this feel for the Olympics, and not that many. Jim, Jimmy was there. In fact, yeah. he was really testing the limits. He almost did his high kneel position. Yeah. He said, you know, how are we different than high kneel? Is it okay to do? I thought it was wonderful what he did, and he paddled all on his right, one side. I think, <laughs> on, all, on the one side. But still to be a part of that and to get a sense of what that would feel like. But the, the transition from kayak canoe to the 200 meter sprint is the smallest. But the technical race turns on a stand up paddle board is a whole nother world. So I've oh, talked yeah. to people, turning has never been part of, you know, Olympians can be, wow, moving yeah. around on the board. That's where the surfing side, if you are, you know, if you walk the board and you already know how to cross step, it makes a huge difference in whether you can flip a, a pivot turn and dealing with some of the things that, you know, less balanced standing Absolutely. up. Absolutely. If, you know, if you talk to any of the athletes that come from a spring canoe kayak, I mean, the one thing that draws us to paddle boarding is the, the technical aspect of it is the fact that, you know, you have to switch sides. You have to know how to turn the turns, the, the being able to read the ocean, the waves surfing, uh, another big part is, you know, if you fall off, you can just climb back on and continue. In a canoe, if you fall in, if you tip, your race is over. You're done, right? In in a sop, I don't know how many times, you know, the first couple of Carolina <laughs> Cup races I did, like, you know, you're counting. I fell six times. I fell seven <laughs> times. Oh, my God, you know? And you shock yep. your boots. How many times did you fall? None. Oh. <laughs> oh. You know? But that's what, you know, Connor Baxter, yeah. they, these guys don't fall. But that's what's attractive for, for us, and I think, on, on anybody and everybody, how fast you can learn and, and, and excel to not try to be, you know, the, the best of the best, but better than you were last year or last month and, and how you can do better in the next race, how you improve your turns, your, your, your drafting skills, your downwind skills. Like it is just so much is out there on paddle boarding and spring canoe. Yes, it's very technical. It's very fast but there's no room to make mistakes. In paddleboarding, even though like you don't want to make mistakes, but you can get away with and still have a wonderful time. Um, yeah. You know, I, I probably would, I'd love to give you a story where uh, we've had a very important race, let's say World Championships Olympics, or even the World Cup where let, either I was alone or my brother and I raced and we tipped. Luckily, I don't have stories, but stuff like that happens. You know, in the race, you drop your paddle or, or whatnot. You don't really have that recovery time like you have on, on SUP. And, and, you know, you're always looking for those perfect conditions where there's no wind, it's fair, and 
It's really just the speed versus the next guy to you. On sub, if you know how to ride the waves, you know how to turn, like, I, I, that's why I love racing these top guys because I can hope, sadly, but I'm watching from behind how those guys do it, right? And, and you learn from them and, and that's exciting and that's fun. Well, I, you know, I started this fairly early in terms of how long Seth's been around. I've been racing for 11 years, but I'm old and I started old, but it's still so wonderful to me to think that I can still improve because not only is there room for mistakes, we haven't quite figured it out necessarily. Exactly. We're still, we're still, you know, adapting equipment. We're still adapting um, our techniques and that's yeah. exciting. And there is, as you've mentioned, you, you, you read the list. There's so many different ways to stand up paddleboard, so many different skills to learn. And that's, to me, that's really cool. The idea that I can always still be improving at this, even at my age. And even though, yeah. yeah. And there's things I, as someone who fell a lot at the beginning and could still pull off a decent, you know, finish, or, you know, I start against, you mentioned them, the Jade Housens, Shea Foudy's, Candace, yeah. you know, they're my neighbors. And so, I don't usually start as fast as them. And, yeah. I, you know, I can certainly work on that, but I don't expect to. Ah, but some of, sometimes they don't have, you know, some of the things that I have from experience, like being exactly. able to <laughs> manage myself through a long distance race and such. Yeah. So it is, it's just all so fascinating. I could talk to you the whole time just about stuff in general, but I want to get back to Canada because yeah. I thought it was so exciting that when they announced ICF, uh, there was just such great energy, you know, cute little Maddie LeBlanc, you know, it's like, I'm going and like help, you know, which we have to do in North America. You talk about countries that, oh, well, Canada, I think helps its athletes more. We're still in this catch 22 because we part of not being defined yet is that we don't get money yet specifically to us. And that's yeah. part of this interesting, and it's not all about the Olympics and the top, but we want to make the whole thing flow and work together from use, yeah. from recreational, um, I consider myself an age group paddler, but I just love that we still can all connect. And I love being in, like you said, in a race with those top people because yeah. I learn just by watching them. That's why I started racing because I didn't know anybody who was paddling. So I went to a race to go watch people and try to figure out how to do it. How to do it. Yeah. <laughs> and I got hooked immediately. And <laughs> Exactly. So, absolutely. So we are very fortunate in Canada where our sport, spring canoe kayak, is very established. We have our own association. And not only that, but even in, not nationally, but even provincially. So we have young athletes who are already being on provincial team or getting some kind of funding as well as uh, uh, getting uh, help with school uh, tuitions. Uh, if you're a national team member, your university is paid for. So most athletes take, you know, opportunity and advantage of this, which is great. Uh, we do have, uh, like, it's, it's an amateur sport, but there is funding from the government uh, directly to the athletes. Uh, but that's just for kayak and canoe, right? Just stand -up kayak paddle. and canoe. Yeah, it's not, it's stand -up. not for stand-up paddleboarding. So obviously I got very excited when the International Canoe Federation announced that the world championships will be in Hungary as a Hungarian native. I want to go. Uh, I've been to many, I've been to ISA worlds. I've been to ICF worlds. Mm -hmm. And when, when I reached out to all the Canadians, cause I know we have amazing paddlers, female and male paddlers, you know, every year I'm trying to get Larry to come and, you know, and he's always like, ah, it's too far. Or, but, but I, I think, uh, you know, this Hungarian trip, kind of boosted everybody up a bit and we have really great athletes even canadian athletes that i haven't personally met or maybe even raced against because you know there's young guys out west that i've never got to race because they didn't really didn't make it down to carolina cup or or i haven't been able to go out west you know board logistics all kind of stuff but mm -hmm. we could have a strong team and so when i put that little uh hey guys let's get together and let's go represent Team Canada, there was a lot of buzz. And, and I was so excited to see it. And not only that, but, but Canoe Kayak Canada uh, is willing to come in and, and help. Obviously, we need to see what the, you know, our, the virus situation and, and, and how we can do things. Um, I'd love to be like, okay, we have, you know, 10 boys, 10 girls, let's go. We'll get two houses, we'll rent them, we'll live together it probably won't be that easy because like I said, 
there's going to be, if it happens, I think there's going to be gazillion people um, in Hungary, not only just the Hungarians that are coming and watching, but I mean, Hungary is such an easy country to get to for all over Europe. The Europeans, so yeah. I think all the Europeans, and, and we all know how big Euro Tour and, and this is a world championship in the heart of Hungary. So I think it could be huge and it could be really good for the sport of SUP. Mm -hmm. Maybe too big, but we'll see. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's it, still, oh, it is still open. There's the open category. There's absolutely. youth categories. There's master's categories. And you don't have to qualify yet. Um, we want to send part. strong teams, but I think it's fantastic that this, you guys should go now while it's still open before it starts being a narrow team. Yeah. And I think that's the best part because everybody asks, how, how do I qualify? It's like, just, just sign <laughs> up and come, yeah. come, come to Hungary, right? You know, the hard part is the logistics of, of you know, getting the board that you want. Uh, you mm -hmm. can always fly with your paddle and, and hopefully you can always find a place to stay, but it's the, it's the board rental. And, like what well, we talked about how great it could be because it could be so big, but it also could be like, well, there's so many people, we might not have enough boards for everybody to rent or grab or where are we going to get all the boards from? So I know yeah. FIC was, you know, kind of looking into maybe doing uh, something with the ICF to, to rent some boards, and, but, but it, it, it could be too big. So we'll see yeah. what happens. I know Starboard might be doing something too. So, so we'll see. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm still trying to find a board for me to make sure right. I can get one, what I need right there. Right. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, but so, so in Canada where we are working towards, and I know canoe kayak Canada, especially, uh, now that, you know, stand up paddle boarding, it is bigger. And we have people like Larry Kane and myself, uh, there's other athletes who've been on the national team here in Canada are doing it and doing well at it. I mm -hmm. think, you know, we, they are trying to reach out and, and try to come up with, with a plan where maybe eventually some of the athletes or maybe the team could get team uniform sponsored or, or maybe even something along those lines. And, and it is going in a positive way. That's fantastic. I love, love hearing all of that. So um, back to kind of stand up and you and uh, talk about what – so. I don't know if you want to focus more on being an athlete or being a coach, but equipment that you use both in your um, group and what you use yourself. Yeah. So I've been very fortunate and we talked about Jimmy Terrell and Larry Kane, and we all know these guys are big quick blade uh, paddlers. Uh, like I said, back in my day when I was really young, still living in Hungary, uh, my uncle, so my dad's older brother ended up coaching team USA for a couple of years. And Jimmy was one of the athletes. And then when my dad came to Canada, eventually the U.S. team trained with Canada. So we had a very strong connection with Jimmy Terrell and the U.S. team. Um, and when I first started paddleboarding, um, Jimmy just said, like, Tommy, call me, whatever you need, let me know. And so, I mean, I look at Jimmy as a, as a big uncle uh, for me because I met him when I was, you know, this big in Hungary, uh -huh. in, in actually Balaton in our uh, in our uh, in in our Hungarian cottage or our family cottage back then, and uh, um, so it, it's really been a family connection with Jimmy. So that's wonderful. And, and and the way I I his family and the way they deal with people very professional and obviously his paddles are beautiful and fantastic. So for me, it's quick blade all the way. Um, not that there's no other better or or, or good paddles out there because there's a lot of good out there. I strongly believe in Jimmy and Jimmy's uh, professionalism and his family. So I love Quick Blade. Mm -hmm. um, and very fortunate, early in my years of stand-up paddleboarding, and I remember this because Jimmy invited me. He's like, Tommy, you got to come out to California. Uh, there's this race called Hano Hano. It's pretty flat water. You would do well in it. I'm like, okay, sure. <laughs> so at that point, I started talking with SIC guys. And I haven't even met Anthony Scatura yet. He's, you know, the big top guy. He was still mm -hmm. dealing with flow, snowboard, and SIC. Um, but I said, I, I called SIC. I said, can I borrow a board? Can I, you know, race on it? Like, yeah, yeah, no problem, Tommy. Okay, let's see what you can do. I actually ended up winning the race. Um, that year, uh, Danny didn't, he only raced OC1. He didn't hop over to race SUP. But I ended up winning Hano Hano. 
and uh, SIC is like, okay, we like you, done. Two years <laughs> before, it was uh, George Constat who won Hano Hano. So two years in a row, an SIC athlete won it. And I, I really loved SIC because it wasn't a big team. It was a unique, cool-looking board back then that Mark Rappers designed back with our very first, you know, flat water race boards that SIC had coming from the downwinding to, to, to the, the X pros and X pro lights. And, you know, they were very skinny, no volume at that point, but, you know, we're talking six, seven, eight years ago. Uh, but I always loved the SIC. And once I got to know the athletes, the, the, the brand and the people behind it, I mean, I mean, we always call ourselves the SIC Ohana, the family, and it truly became a family with Mark Rappers and Anthony and all the great people that are behind the, the, the product. Even now that we are, you know, part of a, a way bigger family at Tahe Outdoors, but it is just fantastic to see not only SIC, but all different crafts and different uh, brands growing. And, and it is good to see that other brands are merging to stay alive and stay together and, and stand up paddleboarding. Um, and, and, and I think that's what we need to do. We got to keep pushing our brands and, and believing in it and, and, and love what you do. And people like Anthony and, 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 and Mark Rappers and, and all the athletes and all the ambassadors, not only on SIC, but just on different brands and athletes that love. And you can tell those people too that, really really love their brands and really love their their products it's just mm -hmm. there's no like no way my board's better like what are you <laughs> it's you know it's not like that. no it's, we do it's, appreciate it's, all of them and i be, i love you mine too which aren't all, the same man. as yours but i appreciate them all yeah absolutely hey i'd love to get some tips from you tommy how about um someone we have this whole new group because of covid like you said there's yeah. a silver lining to even horrible things like what's happening in the world with the disease because so many people have found the outside and so many people have found paddling. So getting into racing, what would be some tips or also maybe some things to avoid if you want to get into racing? Yeah, I think getting into racing, uh, definitely try to hook up with a friend. You don't have to do this alone, right? Even though, you know, we got a social distance and all that. But with help, it's always easier. So a friend who's maybe done it before or never done it before, um, just, just in a smaller group, it's safer to paddle and train in a smaller mm -hmm. group with others, as well as it's just more fun, right, than being there by yourself. Um, and as well, you know, like you said, show up to races just to get information, just to see what's going on. Because I always tell my clients, like, just come to one race. You'll see. You'll never want to leave it <laughs> and see yeah. because it's such an amazing vibe and, and energy. Um, show up to races. Ask questions. Um, most of the time on a lot of, you know, bigger races, you can try different brands, different boards, different paddles, which is a fantastic way to introduce yourself to, to the racing scene, introduce yourself to racing boards. Um, if you've never done it before, you can try different sizes, right? It's not, you know, you're jumping on a 14 by 28 and next day you're foiling like Kai Lenny on a three <laughs> foot, you know, it, it takes steps, right? Mm -hmm. So, so. Take your time and, and then if you can, join a paddling group, join a training group that will just help you, educate you. Um, and not only that, but they will most likely have a coach or others who are more experienced could help you with, you know, sizing your paddle, finding the right board for you. But that's really, like I said, it's really up to you. Uh, same with the paddle, but, you know, talking technical terms, um, I see a lot of times, you know, pad people are joining and they got paddles way too tall and blades are so big, like you wouldn't even use it in an OC1. That's so, how we started and we were hurting our shoulders. Exactly. It wasn't good. So a lot of people, <laughs> you know, a lot of people just buy whatever they can. And my next point would be is, is educate yourself a little bit online or through friends of, you know, yeah, you're not going to throw up, you know, $5,000 on the board here and a $500 paddle right away. But you do want to buy the right equipment. And I always tell people, get the right equipment. Yes, it's a little bit more expensive, but like you said, you're not going to tear your shoulders off. So you're going to enjoy the sport a lot longer. And mm -hmm. then you can always improve and upgrade and upgrade so forth and so forth. Yeah, fantastic. Great advice. 
Hey, I have to, I can't forget. Taylor asked a question. He sent oh, yeah. it in and I don't even understand it, but I'm sure you do. Oh, it was when are we going to have Fiddlehead at the spot? I oh, hope so beautiful. soon. So those of you guys, <laughs> and, and so this spot is a restaurant downtown Burlington, right on the water. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's managed and owned by Russ Gully, who owns Wind and Waves. And he oh, yeah. is an amazing uh, waterman, windsurfer, kite, foil, uh, really good friends with Chuck Patterson. So yes. Chuck will tell you guys all about the spot and the mahi-mahi fish tacos. Oh, my Ooh, goodness. Yum. It's unbelievable. So it is my favorite place to be and to paddle. So I try to go in the summertime when we're allowed. I try to go down at least once a week to get together with those guys and paddle and train. How and long a drive paddling, is that for you? It's about From a two-hour drive. Really? South of the oh. border. And we are paddle on Lake Champlain, and it's one of the most beautiful places that I can think of. It's got rock cliffs, and, and I'm always thinking like I'm on ocean, but it's, it's a beautiful, clean water lake. Uh, you have amazing downwinders. Uh, I mean, just to name you a few amazing athletes that come from there. You got Dr. Bob Arnett. Oh, we yeah. all know Dr. Danger Bob. Dr. He trains Bob. with our group. We got Spencer Bailey. Uh, we got Laurel. We got all the wind and wave guys, uh, you know, when they're not too busy working or, or surfing with Chuck somewhere. Surfi else, surfing, yeah, in Puerto Rico. Or, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's an amazing group. And Taylor, of course, an amazing group of guys. And that paddling community has grown as well mm. uh, because um, the Burlington okay. Surf Club, it, it's a huge piece of uh, land uh, on Lake Champlain with white sand and amazing shacks that, that – uh, Russ has built where we store our boards and afterwards we go to the restaurant. You know, we train two hours, three hours on the water and we just go to the restaurant. Fiddlehead is my favorite uh, IPA beer that is okay. right there in Burlington, Vermont. So everything is just together with amazing people like we talked about. And that's oh. all we do. We get together and we share stories. And okay, so everybody they, listening, we're meeting there because oh. I've always heard about that store and that crew, and I followed them through Chuck and others. And but I've never been to Vermont, you have to and go. I've never been there. And you just told me like a thousand more reasons yes. I need to go there. First weekend of okay, Russ, we're coming. <laughs> first weekend of August, stand up for the lake. That's the race the guys have ran for I think over ten years now, and it's one of the most funnest, awesomest races. It's sponsored by the restaurant sponsored by Wind and Waves. Uh, anybody who's anybody got to come, just come and check it out. There's beer, the, the, the breweries everywhere. It's fantastic. There's amazing pizza place, but, but the paddling there and the paddling community and the people is, is fantastic. So Okay. Yeah. All of those are just so high on my list, but Mahi Mahi Tacos with Fiddlehead oh. IPA. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, it's my favorite. So the guys know Taylor. Yeah, uh, I, I see a little comment. There's uh, Wes. <laughs> he's he's from actually all the way from Washington with Capital Sup guys. You know oh, those yes. guys, the Capital yep. Sup. So yeah. Wes is actually from there, but he comes up every year and uh, hangs out with us, races with us, and he yeah. was down with us in Florida last year. So amazing people that just good times you know, get together yeah, and, and uh, we train, love we, race, that. we have fun. Yeah. Hey, just I want to give you a heads up because sometimes Instagram cuts us off at an hour, which we're just about to. I could keep nope. talking to you forever, but um, how about um, again, just a reminder, you guys, that this is recorded and it's been so great to talk with you. But maybe a few of your favorites. You have traveled a lot in your life. You just yeah. mentioned a great spot to stand up paddle. Any others that you have been to or you would hope you hope to get to? Well, I mean, my other favorite is, of course, Carolina, Wrightsville Beach, you know, Blockade Runner Beach Resort is, you know, the manager, Nicholas, there. He knows everybody's name. I don't know how he remembers. He <laughs> meets him and boom, he knows it for the rest of his life. Those guys are amazing. So Wrightsville Beach, North Carolina, Charleston in South Carolina is quite beautiful, too. An amazing waterways there. Um, and of course, I, I, I love Dohe Beach down in California there. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if anything big's going to happen, but I'd love to get back to California and, and, and race again and, mm -hmm. and see all the, the Cali people and, and everything. But I mean, that's the great thing, about, great thing about paddleboarding is you can go anywhere and pick up a board and paddle and paddle 
Uh, I know Euro, uh, Euro Tour is huge now. They're racing almost every other weekend or every weekend. Uh, I, I talked to Bellar. I'd love to go. He's like, bring your family. Do like yes. Kevin Marquette did. You know, bring the girlfriend. But my wife is like, if we go to Europe, we're going vacation. There's no racing. <laughs> she's not willing to do the weekend race. And then it's just for her, she's been through the paddling because she was an athlete herself. Ah. Like Stephanie. Uh -huh. So she's been to uh, 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 PPG a couple of times. And, you know, when you introduce everybody and she's like, Tommy, I, I don't Tim. remember the name. Just let me sit <laughs> on the beach, read my book. You do your thing. And so, yeah, I so can I totally relate. I my husband's a bit the same. I'm like, well, why don't I fly over there first and do my thing? And then you join me. Exactly. <laughs> so you yeah. don't have to do that part. But, but I'm at a know. different season of life. My three kids, like you, are 26, 28, 30. Yeah. So we're kind of in between, not grandparents yet. They're not at home. So, so we, yeah, we're still, we're still full time. My, my daughter's two years old, well, wow. almost three, but she acts like she's six. It's crazy. <laughs> and then I have a nine and a seven year old boy. So it, it, we're uh, lucky because the two boys take care of the girl too, but they like to tease her once in a while. But this, this little, oh, she'll be tough. She's going to keep up with them. Oh, huh? she's tough already <laughs> as a two year old. So it's, but it's super fun. Great stuff. Well, I could talk to you for another hour, but I really appreciate your time. Um, and, and again, your energy and your knowledge and what you're sharing up there. Thank go, you so Tommy. Much. Go, you're Canada. Super. And um, hope to see you in June, if not sooner. I was hoping it might be April at, at Carolina yeah, Cup. Yeah, I know. Me too. But definitely hope to see you in Europe. And thank you. And keep yeah. on doing these beautiful interviews. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Stop connect and KT. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, thanks for having me. Exactly. Okay. Take Cheers, care, Tommy. Everybody. Cheers. Boo. Shaka. <laughs> Bye.